Hello and welcome to How to Launch and Scale in Six Months. This is one of our more popular mini courses um, amongst the Startup Hack and Accelerator series, sponsored and powered by the global startup ecosystem. Now, if this is your first time um, being in a program with us, you'll find that our course content is very jam-packed with a lot of content, a lot of information, really great strategies and hacks to really propel your ideas and your company forward. For the introductions, of course, we'll go through a series of information about the global startup ecosystem, um, our pretty much our hacking model, how we're able to really um, showcase how to really build and scale a company as rapidly as possible, some information about Accelerator program, and so on and so forth. And then we dive right into the main stage agenda, which is pretty much our teaser series of how to launch a scale, starting with our model, which is the start, sprint, and scale model. And we'll cover one idea, one concept from each stage of the business development process, and then finally end with bonus free startup resources, programs, and opportunities. So let's get started. Hopefully you're ready because again, this is a great series of a lot of content and information to really help you and guide you. If you like what you get from this program, feel free to um, check out our other programs and initiatives at theglobalstartupecosystem.com or message us at info at globalstartupecosystem.com if you want to be ambassador to spread the word about what we do around the world to help entrepreneurs succeed on a rapidly scale. So my name is Christine Sufra and Tim, I'm the founder and one of the managing partners of the global startup ecosystem. I'm a Forbes 30 on 30 entrepreneur, so I've built and scaled a business before. I'm currently uh, managing about three different startup companies, all in different fields. One is in travel, one is in the event space, and one is in pretty much e-commerce markets. And it has been truly an honor to share my expertise and my content and my knowledge over the past couple of years, um, especially teaching how I was able to to not only grow these businesses from an idea stage to scale phase, to get it to monetize in a way that's truly unique, um, but also to showcase some of the mistakes and lessons learned and how you could actually accelerate forward some of the strategies and hacks I learned along the way. Now, to give you a brief overview of the global startup ecosystem, we are the world's first and largest digital accelerator program. And by digital, we mean that our accelerator programs are run entirely online virtually. And essentially, we are located in seven different regions, Africa, Asia, America, the Caribbean, Europe, Latin America, and the Middle East. Every year, we run an accelerator program where we select up to 100 companies in each key region to represent the diversity of um, startups and ideas that are coming across each part of the world. So you can imagine we see a lot of great ideas. We meet a lot of different founders for virtually. And of course, we work with over 140 different partners to support these companies as they launch and as they scale um, in many different environments around the world. Our partners are vast in many of the events that we do and the programs and initiatives that we do around the world. As you can tell, um, many of these partners are in the media space, they're in the investment space, they're in the event space. They're all different facets of the startup ecosystem and we're proud to be associated with a lot of international partners as well as no, many localized partners in different regions as well. Now, again, I already told you about myself as a Forbes 30 and 3 entrepreneur with seven years of experience um, across 30 different countries, pretty much um, going to startup events as a, um, a speaker, sharing my knowledge, building companies, and really working with a lot of partners to help companies and platform scales. Um, my partner and husband as well has been doing this for a couple of years and um, mainly focused on exponential technologies like AI space um, and blockchain technology are some of the top topics that he covers and showcases. Um, around the world really teaching entrepreneurs how to build and scale companies in those topic areas. Now, before we begin, it's really important that before we go over this content that we share with you our startup hacking model. How are we able to help you understand whatever stage you are in your business development cycle, where do you begin and what strategies do you use to really start effectively? And once you get a product market fit, how do you sprint? How do you really get out there and get as many customers and as much awareness about your product as possible? And then once you surpass that stage, how do you scale? How do you monetize? How do you fundraise? How do you really really sustain this business for the long haul. And we like to say that, you know, a lot of these concepts are heavily brought upon 
upon many different facets and ideas. And so we are very proud to say that a lot of these strategies, even I personally, were able to start Sprint and Scale within six months. However, everyone has their different stories of entrepreneurship. Maybe you have a business and you're doing it part-time. Maybe you're doing it full-time. Um, full-time, of course, you could launch and scale faster. If you're doing part-time, it might take a little bit more work. But the point is, at any stage of business that you're in, you could leverage the structure to really help guide you wherever you are in, along your journey. Um, but also, sometimes take a refresher because even if you're in the scale phase where you've already, you know, found your product market fit, you already found a ways to market to get customers, and you're currently monetizing. Sometimes there are great strategies in the start phase that you probably didn't think of that you could still try to leverage as well. Um, so be open and be um, able to internalize a lot of the different options we'll be sharing with you today. And again, this is pretty much our introductory um, format of what the start, sprint, and scale model truly is. The full content on this is, as you see here, which is pretty much a part of the GSP Start Accelerator program, where you go online and really see the full blueprint of what this is, is where when it comes to the start phase, we tend to talk about, you know, how can you um, get your ideas up and running within a month or less, and where we go over a week-by-week -week breakdown of how to ideate and create a B plan and create an execution plan to really get your ideas out there. And then of course, how you could um, pretty much build an app, a website, or pretty much a pilot product MVP to get it out to customers, whether it's a service oriented business or product oriented business, there are ways to get your um, ideas and manifest it out there as quickly as possible. And of course, week four, which is not something a lot of people talk about in the startup space. It's more of a conversation that happens targeted towards small business owners, but it's pretty much one the same it's pretty much how do you legitimate legitimize your company beyond the corporation like bank accounts credit um, access how to get vendor access how to really build a profile of stability um you know and, you know amongst you know the credit um world as well and so it's a really important topic that not enough startup founders are told or talked to about and so we talk about that as well and then when you get into the sprint phase, it's pretty much talking about, you know, how do you market yourself in the digital age? How do you pitch yourself to all stakeholders, whether they be customers, investors, partners, or media? Um, how do you, um, you know, hack media? Because nowadays it's very crucial that you're able to market yourself and brand your story to be uh, able to get featured in mainstream um, press. And finally, scale. How do you monetize, get your customers, get funding, and of course, build a team around your company. So this is the full um, content of our Startup Accelerator program. So it's really, really intense, a lot of coverage, but pretty much it's a format that helps a lot of founders be able to simplify their, pretty much their to-do list at every stage of the life cycle when it comes to building a business from ideation to scale. So again, um, Start, Sprint, Scale is something that a lot of people love um, going over within our um, events and tours and our, uh, program initiatives that we do around the world. Again, you could do this as little as six months or less, um, but of course, at any point, you could scale as rapidly as your resources are provided. And each one comes in this phase as we expect that for each phase, this is a time frame that it takes. So for example, to start maybe less than a month, to sprint less than two months to really get you know that customer media and stakeholder traction and of course the scale about three months and then going beyond from that so again this is a pre mining course to the full startup accelerator program where we talk about the full fledged of hacking strategies that we've done in the past but this is an overview of the structure and the thesis that we use um, to really guide our entrepreneurs um, in a practical sense none of this is theoretical it's all practical knowledge and expertise that we're sharing with you today of course, now let's get started. Really excited to show you how to start and launch a startup. So let's start with the ideation phase. And in the ideation phase, remember there's four different topics that we usually go over at the global startup ecosystem. But for the sake of this pre-course, we're gonna talk about the ideation phase, which is pretty much how do you create an ideation plan, a B plan, and an execution plan. And we say that you need to create these three different processes because they're not all one and the same. 
when you're ideating, you're pretty much in that testing phase where you're trying to understand, is this concept viable? How do you get it out there? And once you're able to really expand on that and you start to do research and analysis, that's when it comes into your business plan. And we always tell people, the business plan is not just this 25 page document that people used to use back in the day. It's also different formats of expressing your business, whether it's in a pitch deck format, a video pitch format, or the executive summary format. There are different ways to um, document what your company does and why it does what it do. And then finally, which is my personal favorite, is your execution plan. Yes, that information is, you know, obviously reflecting on your business plan, but there's something about doing a deep dive analysis as to how are you really going to go out there and really as a founder, um, piece yourself and you know, pretty much empower yourself to get your product out there, leveraging your network and putting yourself on a, a timeline schedule that pushes your boundaries and pushes your limits to really get it out there and running. So we'll go over that today. So let's start with the ideation plan. Obviously, when it comes to ideation, um, there's many different ways to, um, you know, think of something and really put it out there in the market. What we've seen is, of course, no idea could come to fruition without really document it in some way, whether you visualize it, sketch a mock-up, or, you know, write it out, um, really just document it in the first week. And of course, um, what we tend to say is deconstruct the idea as well, you know, challenge it because you're going to be met, met with a lot of naysayers, a lot of competitors, a lot of perspectives once you get out there to the market. So why not start doing it yourself? So we tend to say do the why activity where you deconstruct, where if this is a problem that you've seen, you know, with the um, opportunity, why do you think your solution is better than the alternatives that are out there? And of course, once you're able to ask yourself those hardcore questions, you're able to pretty much find your target easier, your consumer, who would most likely want to use the service because um, you're creating the solution. And of course, the favorite part that I tell founders, um, you know, during this ideation phase is pretty much getting out there and testing. Um, one of the most no notable things that people say is that getting service out there and get, um, get people to answer questions about your potential product or service. Now, nothing beats meeting people in person. Of course, you can send thousands of surveys and get great amount of data and feedback. But keep in mind, when you do live interviews and conduct with people, the feedback is not only the answers to their questions, but also their reactions. Because a lot of times, you know, you could lie um, under the disguise of a survey that's sent to you for online digitally, right? But when someone's talking to you in the first, um, in firsthand, you know, in person, um, your facial expressions, your reactions. So for example, if your question is, what do you think about the product? Did you enjoy the ease of using this, um, this app? And the person might say, um, well, yeah. Well, the person could say yes on a survey, but that person's hesitation was saying, oh, well, yeah, well, that is a completely different perspective um, from the documented digital version because now you're seeing there's a hesitation and you could inquire a little bit more like why did you hesitate why did you say it that way and you could say well it was a great app but you know it took like three steps for me to get to the you know the home screen as opposed to just one step which is why I anticipated you won't get that feedback on a digital server when you're just asking the question yes or no because you won't see the facial expression to see that you need to inquire more so that's an example of um, when it comes to project testing um, your business idea don't underestimate the power of live interactions with people. I always say three live interactions is better than 300 digital um, behind the scenes service, hands down. Now, of course, always leverage feedback loops. So once you get out there, you get some feedback, try to see if you can follow up with that person again when you have another iteration. Because sometimes having that consistency shows that some improvement, maybe you're doing better with the product, you're getting worse with the product, whatever it may be, it's great to have feedback loops and of course a variety of feedback loops because you might have like at a, a base of 100 potential customers, maybe 90 of them hate the product and 10 of them love the product. And you might think, okay, this product is not for me. And I've, I've, I've actually done that where I've interviewed dozens of customers and I realized the majority didn't like them. And contrary to proper belief, that doesn't mean the product is not good. Maybe I'm targeting the wrong people. Maybe the 10 that love the product, that's the target customer that I actually want to appeal to. And so you have to make those decisions all along the way and really understand what is your goal and also to what is the market telling you. And the market may not be as blatant as you think it is. So again, 90 customers hating at 100, you might think, okay, this is a failed product, but maybe those 10, those mighty 10 that love it, 
there's something there, there's a gem in there that you might see possibility or vice versa. So always like really, really be creative and open-minded and just hope for the wisdom to understand the difference um, between what experts say that you're supposed to do with that market knowledge expertise versus what your instincts is telling you to do um, as a founder, as a creative genius that you are to come up with this idea and want to monetize it. Of course, the, um, you know, the final part of ideation is engaging with those feedback, documenting it, um, and gathering all the insights you need to really propel yourself forward. So with that, you have content, you have feedback, you have some engagement um, coming to you. Now you're able to really create, like I said, multiple versions um, of this business concept that you have. And I always tell people, you know, start with your business plan because it's probably the, the way where you could ramble as much as possible. And it's pretty much, I tend to say, an internal um, constitution for, say, a, a living document that's held internally amongst your company about how you plan on building this product and executing on the service component of it. Um, and the pitch deck is an executive summary is what you market to the public because it's more bite-sized, easy to digest, and easy to communicate. Um, and always have that readily available either via email or USB drive. Um, just make sure it's accessible. Um, and don't overthink it. You know, a lot of times people have 20 different things that you could put in a pitch deck. Um, at the very least, people want to make sure that they understand the background. And the background means the background of the founder, the background of the company. How did it come to be? Airbnb is not the only bed and breakfast, um, you know, booking site that's out there. There are dozens and hundreds of competitors in the market, but they were able to provide the background um, story around who they are as founders and how they came up with the, pretty much with the business concept. So think of that as well. And when it comes to your executive summary, make sure you document that. Context, you know, maybe sometimes this idea maybe wouldn't have worked 10 years from now. We always tend to see if I'm using Airbnb as an um, example, it was because there was a financial crisis that people were even considering um, renting out their homes to strangers when we were pretty much in a better time um, financially as a, um, as a society it just probably wouldn't have happened. So they were, they came in at the right time when it comes to um, building this business concept um, and putting it out. Then of course they knew their problem. They knew what solution they were providing. Traction is pretty much, here's the idea. And all of a sudden you have people booking on the site. Wow, that's traction. People are reacting. Revenue, they know how to monetize it. Is it a subscription service? Is it a booking service? Is it a fee service? So on and so forth, which reflects the business model. And then of course your company profile is like the quick set of data, like how many team members, one of the founders names, um, the company name, the websites, all those type of details, so on and so forth. So this is the um, business plan um, component once you have your idea out there. Of course, again, my personal favorite is the execution plan. How do you execute on a concept? And so usually, of course, when it comes to establishing your pro uh, project, you have the B plan to really um, get the word out there. But think about how you can establish, um, you know, leveraging your network to get the word out there. Now, one hack that I did when I first got started is, of course, you know, everyone wants to get into mainstream press, but it's not always easy to get into mainstream press immediately. So I'd leverage every single newsletter that I followed as a startup founder. I emailed the organizers and say, hey, do you do any stories on founders who read your newsletter? So I probably was following about, let's say, about 30 or so different newsletters um, and emailed all of them. And about 10 of them replied back and said, hey, you know, yeah, we do just send me a quick blurb about your company. And that gave us eyeballs about like in the thousands. I, I remember one newsletter, which has a reach of about 22,000 subscribers, um, literally within a week, we were able to sell a lot of products, right? And that's not mainstream press. Like you can get on Forbes, you can get on Entrepreneur Magazine yet, but that um, blast of validation from a newsletter of people where people are following this every single week was able to give us a lot of exposure. So you already have a network, even if you don't recognize that network. So I would say sit down and document how many newsletters do you follow? Um, can you leverage your alma mater? I emailed my alma mater and they pretty much did a magazine story about what I was doing, both my undergraduate and my graduate school wrote um, full-pledged uh, magazine articles about what I'm doing. Um, events, um, you know, am I going to any events consistently? Maybe I'm part of a media group. I actually ask organizers, can I actually pitch at the end of your 
um, event or can I, you know, so, uh, um, share flowers with some of your constituents uh, and sorry, flyers with some of um, your attendees since it fits their profile. So it's just pretty much getting creative with what you already have around you for free um, and pretty much kind of cash in on those relationships and just, you're not asking people for money, you're asking people for service. And that service is something that comes easy to them by marketing something that you're proud of and something that you hope that they're proud to display as well. Now, of course, making sure you have a timeline to keep track of the developments because this timeline of how you execute becomes your traction. So the faster you move, the more committed you are to how you organize yourself when it comes to building your company profile leads into the storyline when you talk to investors, reporters, customers, and any stakeholder of your business about what your traction looks like after six months, a year, two years, and so forth. So I'm gonna take a pause right here and let this digest. I know this was um, pretty much a, um, uh, um, a overview of pretty much the ideation phase, but just to review, um, really quickly, we went over uh, essentially before we jump into the sprint component, the ideation phase where we went over pretty much how do you ideate, how do you come over the concept and put it out there and document it, and how do you translate this concept of testing and getting it out there and being savvy about how you get information, um, where I said, you know, be mindful of how you survey versus interview to now document it in, in different formats for the public and internally. So you have the business plan, you have the executive plan, you have the pitch deck, and you know, really thinking through like, you know, how do you uh, put content in that executive summary with the background to so on and so forth to the execution plan where you think critically about how do you get the story out there and leverage your network. And I gave you a hacking example of what I did to get my concept out there to thousands um, of viewers. Now we're going to dive into the sprint component. Again, I'll give you guys a pause break to really digest what we're just talking about. And with this question in terms of the ideation phase, how did you ideate and launch your business idea? And how do you think you will do things differently at this time based on what we just shared for this first phase? Take 30 seconds and then we'll get right back to it. All right, so now that you thought of that, now let's dive into sprinting. Like, how do you market your product and get it out there? Now, my favorite part about this component is actually press hacking, but in the interest of time, the art of pitching and expressing your idea and your concept to different stakeholders is very, very crucial, so we'll focus on that. But keep in mind, again, if you want the full-fledged blueprint of this accelerated program, just go to globalstarbetecosystem.com and you'll find all the information you need about that. Now, pitch marketing. How to pitch your company and win prizes and partnerships, but also win different audiences of different backgrounds. So we'll go over the pitch format, how to like really format your story and your pitch if you need one, how the pitch content. Remember, less is more. There's a reason why commercials are 30 seconds or less. Rambling about every single facet of your business won't get you the eyeballs that you need. And of course, the checklist, how to really get yourself out there to pitch at events, competitions, tours, within your network, so on and so forth. So Let's talk about the pitch format. Now, usually when it comes to pitching, you, you're telling someone your story. You know, how do you introduce yourself? How do you introduce your company? Um, and so usually you tell people, you don't need a lot of time to express yourself. As a matter of fact, if you can't express what your company does in a limited, limited amount of time, that you, you, you're pretty much still figuring it out. And people can see it as night as day when, you know, people are still lost in translation in terms of describing what they do. So the format that we usually have is the what and the why, the value in 10 seconds, where you're telling it to our audience, you know, how you pitch it to an investor might be different than how you pitch it to a reporter versus a customer, and your traction and call to action. So to give you an example of this, I'm going to use my company as an example, so that way I could quickly show you how I was able to pretty much raise a quarter of a million dollars in six months just through pitching and simplifying my message about what we do and how we do it and why we do it. So let's start with, um, you know, again, this pitch as an example. So usually when I walk into a room or meet someone, I say, um, especially when it comes to these competitions or these, you know, um, vast open spaces where I can express to a group of audience, I would say, of course, hi, my name is Christine Souffrant and Tim. I'm the founder of Vendetti, which is a uh, street marketing directory that connects travelers to street markets. Done, period. What does that mean? Now, in that first sentence, you know, you have my what and why in a sense, because I'm telling you, first off, my name, Christine Souffrant and Tim, 
right? I told you to name my company, Vendetti. I told you my position, I'm the founder. So sometimes people want to speak to the decision maker. Um, I told you what we do and what we are. You know, we're a street market directory that connects travelers to street markets, right? Now you might have dozens of questions about how we do it, why we do it, and this, that, and the third, but you know the key opening um, facts that you need to follow up essentially, right? The name of the company, my name, you know, what we do and how we do it is a street market directory. Um, and the reason why I say this is important because a lot of times people pitch their ideas, they don't tell people their name, they don't tell people how to find them, they don't tell people, you know, why they do what they do in a simple format. And so if you're pitching and expressing your company, keep it simple, keep it brief, um, so that way people can repeat it, right? And then there's the value component in 10 seconds. Who am I talking to, right? So if I'm pitching to, let's say, a reporter, um, I would say, hi, my name is Christine Super and Tim. I'm the founder of Vendetti, which is a street market directory that connects travelers to street markets. And I'm doing this because, you know, I come from a long line of street vendors from Haiti, from my grandmother to my mother to myself. We've all built a lifestyle selling street products in the streets of Haiti. And through my travels around the world, studying street markets, I'm trying to create the first centralized network of street markets for travelers as well. And right there, that reporter has such a great, powerful story. I mean, how many people do you find who are street vendors in one lifetime and understand the street market economy, which is pretty much the black market economy from firsthand experience, and now as a way of centralizing that you know that ecosystem in a way for people who are sophisticated like travelers can purchase directly from it's very rare and so this person this reporter has a sound bag but if i'm talking to an investor they want to know the numbers they want to see the market potential um, of this business and i probably will say hi again my name is christine super and tim i am the founder of vendetti which connects travelers to street markets and we're digitizing a $10 trillion street market economy by pretty much helping the 1 billion travelers that are traveling every single year and increasing year on year to try to buy more authentic products and more unique products, um, you know, when they go abroad as opposed to the typical souvenir shops that they go to, right? Um, and then I can end it there and I can elaborate with, you know, this investor is going to grill me and say, wow, $10 trillion market. Why is this so huge? How come we didn't know about this? And a billion travelers, there's a lot of room for targets. Should I focus on the Caribbean? Should I focus on America, Africa? So they see a lot of potential for market penetration. And of course, you know, they see a problem solution like, yeah, travelers travel all the time, including the investor I might be talking to. It'd be great to buy really cool products as opposed to the typical, you know, key chain that you see at a souvenir shop, right? And then finally, you know, customers they probably don't care about the story or the traction. They want to know, you know, what's in it for them. And I probably will say, again, my name is Christine Sufran. I'm the founder of um, Vendendi, you know, connecting travelers to street markets. And, you know, we're, you know, a centralized street market directory. So anytime you travel, you can find the coolest street food and coolest gifts that you can bring back home for your family and friends, right? And that's touching for someone who's traveled and wants, you know, have a really great experience and a really great tasting food and at the same time want to buy really great products to take back home as you know a token of their experience but also for gifts for family and friends it's a really direct way of connected to my end customer right then finally the third part of the you know pitch format is the traction and call to action what do you want the audience to do so i say hey we're doing you know we're closing a fundraising round and we're short fifty thousand dollars if you know any investor please connect us or right now we're running a campaign in Latin America. If you know anyone who's traveling to Latin America for the summer, go to vendetti.com to book, you know, access to some of the coolest street markets in Brazil, for example, right? So it's you know important that, you know, even if you don't know what your call to action has, call to action is at the moment, create a generic one that you need at all times. And for a business, it's usually go to vendetti.com, your website, or email us if you have any questions or if you want to partner always have the call to action because you want people to do something with the information you just provided, which is pretty much your pitch about your company. You want them to do something with that. Now, of course, if you have more than 30 seconds to admit to pitch your company, add additional info, elaborate, but don't elongate, you know, pitch process because again, people have short time um, and attention spans. And so the better you are about being clear um, as quickly as possible, the easier it is for the person to understand what you do. And keep in mind, the goal of the pitch is not for you to sound 
you know, just competent and cool and charismatic. Because a lot of times we get so caught up in the art of pitching, the beauty of making us sound graceful, that we forget what the goal was. Essentially, the goal of your pitch is for the person to repeat it, right? Because think about all the stakeholders we just discussed. A customer could bring you more customers if they could repeat it to their family and friends. An investor can invest in you if they could pitch it to the investor board, right? And a reporter can write about you if they could pitch it to the editor. So if none of these stakeholders can repeat your pitch, you just lost out on the opportunity of expanding your stakeholder base to propel your business forward. And I tell entrepreneurs this because this is probably the most viable lesson that you could take away when it comes to the pitching opportunity because a lot of times we've gotten to so much in the Silicon Valley mindset of the art of pitching on stage and looking really good that we forget that fundamentally you're trying to build and scale your business and your business will not be able to scale without stakeholders at least organically sharing it with each other. I mean, we could talk about paid marketing all day long, but the organic process of getting the word out about your business is the best way to get your business out there. Always remember that. So now that that's clear, let's move on to the content. And I won't go too much in detail of this, but remember, the content, keep it very simple. What are you offering, right? What does your product offer in one sentence? Now, a lot of times people try to get really um, you know, complicated. We offer a better alternative to taxi and mass room association or provide an on-demand car service that tracks your driver and your route Uber. I mean, really, it's like a personal taxi service. That's really what you, all you have to say right? And so don't get into the structure of trying to be real theoretical and really put a lot of jargon in there to describe it. What is Uber is pretty much like a personalized taxi service. Someone might describe it a very um, different way, but at least it's simple, right? Um, and so keep it very simple, easy to repeat because your content, you want people to be able to repeat it. Um, and always try to practice, you know, your pitch, you know, 30 seconds or less. So that way, if you have more time, you're more comfortable in engaging with a Q&A, a dialogue, a conversation around your product uh, with whomever you're speaking to in terms of the pitch content, right? And of course, positioning. We talked about this already, you know, really positioning depending on your stakeholder, right? Your customer, your goal is to get them to buy your product. So you focus on the experience. The media, that stakeholder is focused on getting a good story. So what makes you a great story that will empower people and inspire people to read about you? An investor, how can they scale your product? What's in it for them in terms of monetization? Is this a viable business idea? So understanding your stakeholder and understanding your pitch positioning will help you expand your stakeholder base over time. So that concludes the pitch component. And so just to summarize, remember three things, right? One, less is more. Keep it simple, keep it easy to use. 30 seconds or less is more than enough time for you to describe what your business do, does and why it's important to your stakeholder or your consumer, right? Second, make sure you understand the goal of the pitch is not the sound awesome and creative or just glossy. The goal of the pitch is to get any stakeholder who hears about your business to repeat what came out your mouth, right? Because the more um, easy it is for someone to repeat your pitch, the easier it is for the word to spread about your business. So I remember when I started Vendetti, everyone knew what we did. Everyone talked about what we did through social media, through the press. I mean, we got featured in every single article. As a matter of fact, right now, we're a business case study in Harvard Business School and business schools around the world are reading about Vendetti because the story is easy to, um, to repeat people easy to understand and no matter what complexities we deal with as a business we make sure we give people the simple simplified version of what we do so that way they can spread the word and third and foremost whether you have more time to express what you do or not always try to keep it simple and quick and to the point because at the end of the day we live in a highly highly energized world where um attention spans are very short so try to get to the person's heart as quickly as possible and as calmly as possible and clearly as possible um, and don't fill everything with jargon and fluffer information so hopefully that was useful to you so now we're in the third component which is we just we went over a start we went over a sprint scale this is the more popular um part um you know of you know the series is fundraising right how do you fundraise and of course 
monetization comes in obviously customer acquisition, getting people to buy a pro product, which is growth hacking, um, having a team to expand on the product and really the more manpower you have, the more money you can make. And of course, fundraising. And here we'll go over how to raise, um, you know, a quarter of a million to half a million dollars in prizes, grants, and so on and so forth. So we'll go over different buckets of funding. Now, keep in mind, when it comes to funding, for the interest of time, again, there's different buckets of funding. There's crowdfunding, there's investments, there's prizes, there's monetization. But I first want to begin with the mindset of preparing and planning for these fundraising options. So that way you know you're going into the right channels that's best for your startup. So let's talk about that, the planning phase. Be very clear on your funding needs and milestones. Of course, do a cost analysis because a lot of times people just throw out um, dollar signs in the air. I just need 500K and I'll be great. Um, but don't really think about what, how much you actually need because you might say 500K, but all you need is 100K. And you can express that all I need is 100K to get started based on my cost metric, but we're fundraising for 300K because we need that 200K buffer to be able to do these X amount of activities to get this amount of customers in the next 18 months. That simplified message is very clear to investors and shows that you know what you're doing as opposed to saying, we need 500K because we think we need it because that's the average pre-seed round that we've seen people do. So don't be that typical person and just round it up based on what the ecosystem is doing. Focus on your business and the needs and really articulate that clearly and directly. Um, but because for the sake of you know formats, I know a lot of you ask, well, what benchmarks do people expect in terms of your traction in different fundraising spaces? So I'll start by saying, like, you know, if you think about it, a lot of incubators and accelerators expect that, you know, that you have some type of MVP already and you know, tested your product in the market. Um, and a lot of these incubators and um, accelerators offer up to 100K. So if you're going to ask for that amount, expect to be in that lane. And so we have examples of that, of course, on the slide here. But this is an example of looking at the ecosystem to help frame your judgment around, okay, what are you asking and what's usually expected in terms of traction for that X amount? And of course, know what, where, what, um, where along the milestone fundraising process are you in? Pre-seed, seed, series A, B, and C if you're doing actual investment VC uh, smart capital. And of course, be prepared. There's so many times I, I've traveled consistently to 20 conferences a year during speaking engagements and I meet so many awesome entrepreneurs and founders. Since then I say, you know, just send me your B plan or do you have an exact credit summary? And not only do they not have it readily available, they don't even have it created, right? So don't wait till you need these items to have to create these items because you'll put you yourself in a lot of duress and stress for no reason. Have the B plan already, have the financials ready. And by financials, you don't need to have a major you know, pivot table. You just need to have costs, you know, sales, profit or loss statement, right? Just a very basic, you know, profit revenue, like, you know, monetization scheme as to how you want to, you know, make money, how, you, how much it will cost you per customer, and that's it, right? And then have different formats of that business concept. Have a video pitch on YouTube save. Whether you keep it private or public, that video, sometimes you could say, hey, like, I know you didn't get a chance to read my pitch deck, but here's a 160-second video that will be easy for you to understand what we do, right? Um, it's a great way to have all that, that information readily available. Of course, perception. Understand, you know, there are different ways to fundraise or raise capital for your business. It's not always in cash, right? So we did a great job with partnering with a lot of magazines and newspapers and bloggers to market our product, um, something that will cost us thousands of dollars. Legal fees, you know, we operate in so many different countries, the legal fees would have been very high. So we reached out to about like a dozen or so different um, legal firms and see which ones had pro bono services for startups. And out of a dozen, like about five of them said yes. And we uh, worked with all five of them. And one of them became our actual in-house official legal counsel, right? So that's probably like, you know, 100K worth of legal fees that we don't have to put on our cost metric or expense sheet because we interacted with them in in-kind service exchange. So think about anything that you pay for as bills to keep your company running, whether it's shipping costs, uh, marketing costs, legal fees, um, accounting services, and see how you get in-kind exchange with either the provider, competitors, or people in your network that can provide you the service. We've done it before. Not only does it build really great stakeholder relationships, but it puts you in a position to, again, 
pitch the value of your company to different stakeholders um, and not force yourself in the mindset that all you have to keep asking is for money because some things are more valuable than money. Always remember that. Now here again, we have, um, now that we got into, you know, understanding you know, what content you have to have available and how to really um, think creatively around fundraising, um, these are the five buckets that we usually go over in our full-fledged program and you usually start um, with this first one. But for the interest of time, again, if you want the full program, you could go to globalstartupecosystem.com for it. Um, We're going to go over bucket one, which is competitions prizes, contests, and grants, how to actually raise capital as quickly as possible for free capital, right? Um, and again, you know, the other buckets, don't forget, you know, family, friends, and supporters, crowdfunding schemes, smart capital investments, you have incubators, accelerator programs, of course, how to monetize. We go over that in the full fledged program, for, but for now, we're going to talk about competitions. Now, I've won dozens of prizes. I've been a competitor in multi-million dollar prizes, small prizes. I've won prizes as small as 5,000 per check to as high as, I think, $75,000 per check. So there's been a lot of different competitions I've been a part of. And one of the best things I've done was um, essentially, first and foremost, know what databases to use to find prizes and grants automatically. So even if you want to create a separate email account um, to track these prizes and grants, so it's kind of like your goodie jar where you check it um, either weekly or daily um, so you don't bombard your personal email, create a new email account. And that's all that is for, right? Um, my favorite is obviously these four, Angelus, F Success, Minoodle, and Gus. F Success is by far the best one because it's the largest database. Um, so that's my go-to. And of course, once you build your profile there, you go apply to as many competitions and accelerator programs as possible um, simply because they save your profile there. So it's easier to you know, multiply your application process, right? And one thing I would say is that when it comes to um, you know, uh, pitching, and really getting your company out there, really think about, you know, what you're eligible for, right? So what I did was I spent a weekend going through this database, um, locked myself up in a weekend, and researched every single competition I was eligible for. And I realized, like, about close to 100 um, applications I was eligible for, right? And I put them in this, you see in the middle here, this Microsoft Word document where I, I ordered them in the order of due dates. And even if the deadline passed, I still documented it because keep in mind, I'm in for a long call. I'm going to have this company for multiple years. And also competitions happen every single year. So by having it in um, calendar order, I knew, okay, next month there's about, you know, 15 applications to you know, I know I have my work cut out for me. And so I put them in order and I spent the next weekend just pretty much applying in bulk. So the first application, which probably could have taken me, it taken me like maybe an hour. By the time I got to my second one, 30 minutes, third, uh, third one, 15 minutes, pretty soon I got so good at applying in one sitting, um, it was taking me probably almost 10 minutes per application to get it out there, right? And I was always documenting my answers. Um, um, because executive summary of your business plan sometimes is not the only content you have available to answer these questions, right? Um, and so that's what helped me really speed through applications even faster because it's like plug and play, plug and play, plug and play, this editing as I see fit. At uh, one point, I had 60 pages worth of answers from competitions that I applied to. And as you can see here, I'm documenting my journey. So red is all the rejections that I got. Um, yellow is the semi-finalist phases that I got into, and pink is the ones that I actually won. So as you can see here, you have to be persistent, you have to be bold, and you have to keep going. Um, and so um, even though I got a lot of rejections, you know, that one pink one was actually the 75K check that I was talking about. I actually was walking around with the, um, you know, the big oversized check around the airport when I won because I'm like, I can't believe, like, I actually won this prize. Um, so really, you know, organize yourself to not chase for money and competitions throughout the year, but organize yourself to sit down, do your due diligence, right? document it and then do it in one sitting so that way you spend the majority of the time of the year building your business and not chasing after competitions and grants right and of course all those competitors that said no or competitions that said no i emailed the organizer and said thank you for the opportunity asked them for feedback some of them gave me feedback some of them didn't and for the ones that i engaged with i always said like you know can we can we be featuring your newsletter can we stay in touch 
many of my follow-up fundraising capital came from the ones I got rejected from. Many of the partners that I got for free marketing, free press, or anything that I needed in terms of resources came from my rejection. So don't think that because you're rejected that that relationship is done. You can build repertoire with that organizing body and really propel your business forward. I know I've done it and it's been a huge um credit to my business and really help the netty scale as rapidly as possible and now i leveraged it those relationships into my other businesses as well so i didn't have to start from scratch so highly recommend that you do this i again raised a quarter of a million dollars in six months with this process this is tried proven it works the dollar signs will roll in and most importantly in addition to the dollar signs the expertise all the holes that you could possibly think of that will make your business not viable you've been questioned through these competitions. So you know your business in and out after the, um, this experience. So even if you got rejected from everything, you know your market, you know your business product, your service in and out and know how to market it better because of these competitions. So either way, you're winning and either way, you're learning. So really highly recommend, great format, helped me a lot until this day. Even with you know my third business, I still practice this um, you know, humbly humbly uh, because at this point you know our businesses are generating thousands and millions in revenue and it's very easy for you to get caught up it's like okay i don't need to do this anymore but still like it's still tried and proven and i recommend it to every founder that i meet and that's about that so just to summarize you know we went over the scale component which is how to fundraise at a rapid pace and pretty much to summarize be um be strategic leverage databases don't always google search every single composition um document what you're eligible for um and stay consistent apply in bulk save your answers stay in touch with organizers you do that process you're natural in terms of expanding your stakeholder vote. So let's talk about some free start resources. These are resources that you can find on globalstarbyecosystem.com slash resources. Um, just to start with the first checklist, of course, my favorite is Y Combinator's online 10-week um, startup school materials, the same concept they use to teach founders like of Airbnb. They're giving it to the public for free. Of course, you don't need to spend 10 weeks going over this. You could binge it over a weekend. I've done it. But highly recommend if you want, you know, a fully fledged um, content review of how to start and scale with practical, uh, not professors, but founders who actually been through the program can experience for and tell you these ideas. Why Combinators, how to start a startup is a great platform for that. Launch this year is another great site, um, features thousands of entrepreneurial creatives to talk about exactly how they were able to launch in their first year from experience, not theoretical knowledge, all practical experiences. Google for Entrepreneurs have a lot of great ecosystem networks on their site to show you what groups you could be a part of to help you move your company forward. And Startup Digest, my favorite newsletter in terms of keeping up to date with good startup events in your local area or opportunities available to you as a founder. Second checklist is pretty much different formats of building your business. Again, this could be found on globalstartupecosystem.com slash resources, but different formats of understanding and deconstructing your business model. So it's the Lean Startup, Business Smart Canvas. And nowadays, because the experience of your um, that you know users need to have and interact with you as a service, um, IDEO is one of the best design thinking platforms out there. So I highly recommend that you go on their website and see how to leverage their resources. And finally, um, there are different ways to learn content. So founders and funders, um, it's a really great um, site that gives infographics. So if you're not someone who likes to read articles all the time, this is a really great place to start. Um, and for those of you who are just like overthinking the pitch deck, not to worry. Um, these companies have raised millions of dollars um, through these pitch deck formats. So they are available for download for free for you to be able to leverage and copy and paste and build your company profile when it comes to pitching investors. And then finally, track other unicorns and see who are, who uh, have invested in them, who partnered with them, who are the founders. Pretty much the best data on the top companies of the, our time um, is featured on Crunchbase, right? And it's really great um, reports um, about what they're doing, how they did it um, in a very factual and database format. So that way you're not always Googling information. You have all the facts right there in a concise way for you to follow. So hope these resources are useful to you. Of course, you have experts like Paul Graham, Steve Blank, Tim Ferriss that you can follow to help you as well. Um, but again, um, one thing I know a lot of entrepreneurs ask me is like, along with resources to be a successful startup founder, how did you practically, um, you know, 
execute um, during your first year as a founder. And this is the top 10 tools I use. So first and foremost, email marketing is king. I always have to express updates on what our company was doing. Um, also try to attract more customers. So email marketing was a great part of that. MailChimp, was definitely really great it's slick it's clean it's neat and it's able to get 2,000 um, subscribers or less for free so it was a really great resource Hootsuite so I can manage multiple media accounts for free so my Facebook my Twitter my LinkedIn so that way I'm not you know repeating names in each one highly recommend a project management tool because things get over complicated really quickly if you only are using your email accounts to communicate which hence why i said slack is another great option canva makes me look like i've literally hired a full-fledged branding marketing team to market my product but it's really just canva for free um so i've used it to build logos banners flyers presentations awesome awesome site um fiverr.com for anything that you need to get done for your business this is a great site i've done explainer videos for five dollars logos for five dollars i mean it's the best thing out there and it's so simple it's not a lot of back and forth awesome event bright i not only to go to events but also host events i hosted tons of events to gather people around my business um, to get them to know what we do and how we do it so highly recommend it um, meetup so I could join meetups, but also again bring people, stakeholders around our product, Zoom to host webinars and meetings with our stakeholders. And of course, if you thought those nine resources were great, check out a thousand plus resources on globalstartupecosystem.com slash resources. So hopefully um, you found that very useful to you. So what's next? So we went over a lot. And as you could tell, a lot of content, a lot of information. And this was just a teaser introduction in terms of what we usually go over. And like I said, a lot of this content, this is a pre, um, you know, a pre mini course to the full startup digital accelerator program that we feature at the global startup ecosystem. And we really feel like the content that we share with entrepreneurs could be done within six months or less, um, you know, in terms of looking at each phase in terms of like, you know, if you are diligent about how you execute, you, you can move pretty rapidly with these strategies and the hacks that we have. Um, so pretty much what we say as what's next, you know, how to get involved with the community, you know, don't stop here, you know, join one of our accelerator programs. Our accelerator programs run every fall, October and November. That's when we select companies from around the world. Uh, again, if you go to our website, you can see the information, pick which region that you're a part of. So if you're uh, a resident in Africa, apply to the Africa Startup Accelerator Program. If you're a resident in Brazil, apply to the Latin American um, Accelerator Program. We're hosting in seven different regions around the world. Um, second, if you love what you heard here, send us a testimonial and we'll feature you in our newsletter and our marketing materials by emailing us at info at globalstartupecosystem.com. Of course, subscribe to our newsletter. And then we're always using, um, using really great content to help propel you forward. So follow our newsletter for free competitions, opportunities, but also ways to be a part of our community as a leader. So we're constantly looking for country and city ambassadors. So if you want to be a virtual ambassador, because again, the global startup ecosystem is a virtual network, um, you know, representing like, you know, a city in Brazil, a city in Japan, a city in, you know, UAE in the Middle East or anywhere, like just let us know. Email us at the global startup ecosystem, uh, info at global startup ecosystem.com or um, check us out on the website and submit your application. It's literally like a three minute application of who you are. We engage with you through a phone call and you could help represent us in a very vast amount of communities around the world. Um, whether you're a successful founder or someone who's trying to get out there, um, we like to engage with people who are enthusiastic about startup ecosystems around the world. Finally, if you love just the teaser what we introduced here, keep in mind this was not the full program. We go a deep, deep, deep dive into pretty much how to build an app, how to build a website, how to incorporate, how to get credit, how to, um, you know, get into mainstream media and press, how to get your first set of users. I mean, like thousands of different ways to really be creative and getting users for free. You know, how to, you know, recruit and hire and manage uh, a team on a budget when you're a startup and you can barely even pay yourself. You know, we go over all the different facets of the entrepreneurial journey from a practical standpoint under this you know um you know uh, program that we have here to start sprint and scale your business from ideation to 
to monetization and it's a really amazing program that we put together so if you want to download this content just go to globalstartecosystem.com slash shop highly recommend that you will love this content um it's one of the most popular 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 content that we have out there again you just got a teaser introduction to the content that we have but feel free to go to globalstartupecosystem.com slash shop to purchase the full um, accelerated program content experience where we go through not only video testimonials um, and tutoring over each phase of the development process as an entrepreneur, but also give you access to our spreadsheets, our, our cheat sheets and documents and cheat sheets so that way you can keep track of everything and be successful. And we wish you all the best. So. Thank you so much for taking the time. Again, my name is Christine Sobrat and Tim. It was a pleasure engaging with all of you today. Um, definitely stay in touch. Our email is info at globalstartupecosystem.com. And we wish you all the best. And welcome to the Global Startup Ecosystem um, Network. We hope that you enjoy engaging with us and you know, being part of our community in some shape or fashion, or at the very least, um, get access to our content. It's really great information, practical knowledge. We wish you all the best. Stay in touch and best of luck. Be bold, be brave, stay unique. Thank you so much for your time.